I'm not sure if you realize this or not, but virtual agents have existed for a really long time. Yeah, I guess so. I've called customer support at companies for years that have had that robotic agent that tells you to press one for scheduling and press two for directions and so on. Exactly. I want to give a brief history of agents to clarify why today's Gen AI agents are a bit different. There are generally two kinds of agents, deterministic and generative. So those agents that you described could be referred to as traditional or deterministic agents. A deterministic agent is an agent that is based on predefined paths and actions. It's typically workflow-based and event-driven, and it offers a high degree of control and predictability. Sounds tedious. Exactly. A team of people behind the scenes set up very clear directions for the agent on what it has to do every step of the way. These may be very complex directions with lots of decision trees and different logic, but they are deterministic in that the same input will always provide the same output. Unlike generative agents, which have a bit more randomness and creativity to them, and might give different answers to the same input. True. Now the thing about deterministic agents is that in addition to being extremely tedious to build, they're not always effective. Because when you think about those virtual contact center agents, what happens when you have an atypical question or say something it doesn't quite understand? Complete failure, and it's extremely frustrating. And usually when I start yelling at the phone, speak to a live agent, speak to a live agent. Yeah, exactly. Thinking back to our breakdown of the agent components from a previous course, these deterministic agents only contained one or two components of the agent, the reasoning loop and the tools. I see, so it's, it's missing the foundational generative AI model. Basically. I don't want to simplify it too much because in many cases, it was still using AI to convert your speech to text. Then some AI for understanding the text and matching it to a list of potential intents of what you meant, usually by matching some common keywords. Then it might have also used AI to speak back to you. Got it, so many of these agents already had AI, but not generative AI. There was no large language model in the background. Right, which meant the AI was a bit more prescriptive or deterministic for that particular use case. Next came generative AI, a whole new world of natural language understanding. Now agents were really brought to the next level. Instead of just recognizing keywords, these agents can actually understand the meaning and intent behind your words. So if you ask a question in a roundabout way, they can still figure out what you're trying to do. This allows for much more natural and flexible conversations. If we go back to the components of the agent, you can now see a reasoning loop, tooling, and the model added in there. Yet, at this stage, models couldn't directly learn from or integrate a tool's data into their own knowledge because of the way models and tools were architected. So how did that impact things? Well, the generative AI output from the model just wasn't necessarily as relevant and catered to the exact use case of the agent, nor up to date with the latest information. So how did that connection get made between the model and tooling? I assume that's the next step? Yeah. This was solved with RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. This architectural approach enables models to access and integrate information from external data sources. This provides access to more dynamic and up-to-date information, ensuring responses remain grounded in factuality and relevance. And this is how we got to where we are today, with these advanced generative AI agents? Just about. Today, the most complex agents are usually hybrid agents. They have both deterministic and generative capabilities. And the combination is what makes them so powerful. So powerful reasoning loop logic and tooling for the deterministic aspects. And for the generative aspects, all combine together to form one powerful agent? Exactly. That's what we'll be discussing in this lesson. Ready to learn more about those agent components? Let's dive in.